ladies and gentlemen, how are we doing? Good, good, good. I think we are waiting for a couple more people to roll on in. Um, I've had a Facebook toll. <clears throat> I've had um, a Facebook uh, ad, I guess, not an ad, post out. Um, poll, that's the word. Uh, I had a poll out to see what you guys wanted to sketch. And um, you guys voted on the cicada. So I have a variety of cicadas that I'm looking at here. The one under the microscope is I thought um, is the one I thought we would sketch because its wings are um, spread. So that makes it kind of an interesting guy to, to sketch out and look at all the wing venation and stuff. I thought that could be really cool. Um, these are just a variety of other cicadas that I had that I figured you guys might want to see before we get started. They come in all different sizes, right? These um, smaller guys that right here, these black ones, those are the 13-year cicadas. And then these, these at least two guys out on the edges, those are bush cicadas. Um, I'm not sure what this guy is. And admittedly, the one that I want to draw with you today, I'm not exactly sure what type of cicada it is. I'll show you something really quick though. Um, the cicada that we're sketching today, he's right here. And he's this beautiful um, reddish orange and tan coloration. I think that he is absolutely gorgeous. And um, what's funny is that in the exact same tree, in the exact same tree that I collected this cicada in, um, in Nevada, I also collected that cicada killer. Right? Woohoo! Cicadas! Yeah! And so, um, I thought that this was really interesting because not only are the cicadas and the cicada killers pretty much on the same color palette, so you, you can see that they have the same kind of dark red color and then the same kind of gold highlights, I thought that was awesome. Um, but that the cicada killer is predating, right, on our cicadas. So this wasp will go around and sting the cicadas and paralyze them, just like we talked about that tarantula hawk stinging and pulling a tarantula. Um, the wasps will sting, but these guys can actually carry a cicada, so they'll actually fly away with them to lay an egg and bury, uh, um, to lay an egg on them and then bury them so that their baby little wasps can, can survive on the cicadas. It's kind of a sad story, but it's cool that their colorations are so similar. I thought that was fun. Alright. So, you know, after we get done with our cicada, we might, um, go back in and, uh, look at the cicada killer that matches. Alright. Now, uh, let me... There. That'll probably be better. Alright. So, um, my cicada, I'm honestly not sure what species this is. Um, I did a quick search of a couple of different places and didn't find it easily. Um, but... I do plan on running it through a key as long as, um, as long as I find one. So if any of you guys out there know where there's a, a key to the cicadas of the United States, that would be awesome. Alright, so we're gonna put, I'm gonna put desert cicada just because of its environment and its, um, and its colors. Now, um, we do know that, we do know this insect's family, right? So, um, it's insecta, it's a hemipteran, meaning cicadas are true bugs, technically, and then in the, they're in the family cicadidae. So that is one family name. That's pretty easy to remember. As long as you know that they're cicadas, you can remember that they are in the family cicadidae. That's awesome. So our friend Amy Nature Journal the Cicada Killer um, oh, this summer. That's very cool. So your cicada killer was um, 
in Wisconsin, so it was probably a different species, but they're still large and beautiful wasps. I have um, one of the cicadas that I, the cicada killers that I collected in Michigan, and it's actually um, a little bit larger than the cicada killer we're looking at here today. That's fun. All right, so we are looking at the front of our cicada. Um, so if we're looking, this is our first compound eye over here on the left. Um, this is the compound eye on the right. And cicadas do have three ocelli, meaning they have three simple eyes. Um, they're in a triangle formulation formula. So there's one here, one here, and then kind of one up here. Um, the third one on the top of the pyramid is a little bit more difficult to see. And I wonder if I zoomed in just a little bit. We might be able to see it a little better. Yeah, so I think that that third ocelli is um, probably pointing forward on a hill, which is why we're not... Yeah, it's right about there. Yeah, so there's this little shiny spot right here. If you imagined that it exists, the thing is we're looking at it from a dorsal view. So the ocelli right there on the top is actually pointing forward rather than pointing up and to the left or up and to the right like the other two. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on sketching the shapes on its head. All right, so where do I want to start? Um, a lot of times I like to start with a simple shape that's generally close to the center. So I'm going to start with this arch right here. This is where the head hits the pronotum and it's on the back. That's where I'm going to start. And I'm actually going to sketch this way because we're sketching wings. So I went out on a bug hike this week and I saw a bunch of fun stuff. I ended up bringing back a best beetle or two. I have those in Colony now. Alright, so I've got this arch done. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull it around a little bit to give us space for the eye. And then bring it on back up. Um, the top is going to be more like more triangular. You can always just go through and give yourself the basic shape and then go back in and add the details um, and edging that you would like. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of finish this head off. Um, I might decrease the amount that this comes back just a little bit. I picked the pencil with the good eraser. Luckily, maybe. There we go. All right, so we've got kind of this basic head shape um, going in and adding your compound eyes. Um, and Diceroprocta species. Thank you, Eric. Are they these beautiful kind of um, golden red slash beigey colors? Alrighty. That would be awesome if we could get this cicada ID'd for my collection. <laughs> Going in and adding the eyes, a lot of times I like to make sure that the eyes cross out a little bit of my main body shape. Um, that also just makes them, gives them a little bit more um, of a focus on this, on the guy. Alrighty. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add up here in the front, we've got this, this is the beginning of 
kind of the top half of my cicada's mouth parts. And this comes down almost like a pizza shape. <clears throat> this is striated this way. And then it actually runs all the way down and underneath and connects to the piercing and sucking mouth parts. Um, then we have the ocelli to the left of it and the ocelli to the right of it. Those are our simple eyes, right? Those don't see um, images, but they can see shading. And then the third one in the center that's actually pointing in that direction. Alrighty. Okay. Yeah, I looked at the top, like, 15 species of cicadas in Nevada on iNaturalist, and I didn't see them pictured. Um, and then I went through and looked at um, Magicicada's website because they have the most common cicadas across the United States, but it wasn't in that list either. So, that would be awesome if we could... Eric, do you know if there is a key that I could grab somewhere? Alrighty. Moving on back. So, um, this is going to start our thorax. And this is the first segment of the thorax on the top. This is the pronotum. Over here on the edges, you can see this is actually where our wings are finally connecting into the thorax. Um... So we can go ahead and give this a sketch. <laughs> All right. Um, just giving the edges of the pronotum coming down and going out, leaving space for where the wing will connect. And then coming through. That segment should be pretty simple. And there's nothing much happening there either, other than a little bit of protection. And this coloration right here. What I've been thinking about is going back to some of my sketches and adding color. Kind of finishing them off. I don't know, because I like them black and white, too. Oh, cool! That's awesome that you have a cicada in front of you, Amy. Alright, I'm going to move our specimen back just a little bit so that we can see the rest of its thorax. And the start of the abdomen. All right, got the head, we've got the pronotum. Um, this is where our wings are all going to be connecting in, but we can always come back and give this Lord Jewy section. Here we go. Some sculpturing down here in the bottom that's really interesting that I'm not exactly sure how to shade in. I'll admit that. There, something like this. That's really cool. I really like the, um, do cicada have antenna? Yes, cicada do have antenna. Um, I was looking at this specimen's antenna just a little, um, just a little bit before the session because this cicada's antenna, you can't really see from a dorsal view. So you have to kind of put it on its side. 
Give it more light. And when we put this specimen on its side, it gets very close to the microscope. Let's see. we go. There we go. All right. So this is the cicada head on and I am holding it in place for the microscope. Let's see if I let it go, if it'll stay, stay. All right, cool. It's listening. All right, so this is the cicada head on. All right, so you can see its eyes. You can see all three of its cellulite from the front. And that little segment right there, that's its antenna um, right here and right here. So if we zoom in really, really far, we'll look at this side's antenna. There it is. So the antenna is pretty much this one to two segmented, and it's very, very short up here in the front of their head. And that's pretty much why we can't see it from the dorsal. So we can't see it from the top. Um, but what's cool when we look at a cicada from the front is that you can see the beginning of this mouth part that we drew earlier, that um, triangle from the top. This is what it looks like from the front. It's got all of these numbers of ridges. And then at the base of this, it'll have its piercing and sucking mouth part that it uses to pierce into trees to drink the fluids. Yeah. That little thing, yeah, that's all they need. That's their antenna. <laughs> uh. Okay, I thought that they had another hair. Um, that's fair enough that it, it's, it's broken off. I wonder if some of my other cicadas, I wonder if any of my other cicadas, oh, there's one. All right, so my other cicadas have full antenna. We can, um, I'll show you this guy really quick. Eric's right, the, uh, the hair on the end is actually a pretty good length to give you an idea. I picked my oldest cicada specimen, as it turns out. It's my favorite. <laughs> what tree nightmares are made of? <laughs> I love that. Yeah, pretty much. That when they're babies, they drink your roots. And when they grow up, they cover your leaves. They drop honeydew on unknowing, um, on unknowing travelers. All right, so normally at the end of that little stocky segment, there is this hair. And that hair is visible from the dorsal side as long as the antenna is not broken off. So you can go ahead and add that, and I probably will also add the little segment at the base and then the, and then the long hair. Um, that's what they're supposed to look like. All right. Get back to the abdomen so that I, we can finish the dorsal side. I really want to show you guys the, uh, like some of the, the sound making stuff. All 
right. So going down, as you guys know, I like to draw the whole body before I go back and I draw the wings. Um, so we're going to just go ahead and add this abdomen. And my abdomen, because I turned my paper, is going to go off the page. But hey, I'll have enough room for the wings. <laughs> oh. I draw my bugs too big. I just start them. Maybe I just need bigger paper. That's it. I don't need to draw my insects smaller. I just need to get myself some normal sized paper. Alrighty. And then if we're counting abdominal segments, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then reproductive organs. Mine's going to end at four, but that's okay. All right. Um, going in and adding our little, um, our little ridges at every segment because these segments do stack into each other. Okay. Um, now we can look at wings. Um, I f what I figure is I'm going to draw this right side with its wing open and then I'm going to pull another specimen and we can look at what it looks like with the wing on the left side closed. This is as far out as I can zoom. Here, this is what I can do. All right, so this is the base of the wings. This is as far out as I am able to zoom my microscope, but I can also pull the specimen over while we're looking at it. So um, for one, we can look over here, just kind of see the body shape, to see kind of the wing shape. Um, and then looking at the wing venation. That might work. So we'll see that um, in cicadas, the first pair of wings, um, the first pair of wings is about double the length as the second pair. Let's see, there's the head. The wings are going to start here. This is the notch that I gave myself for the wings. Who else has been woken up by cicadas in the middle of the night? <laughs> Uh, I have never eaten a cicada, but I hear that people do, um, where they, where they ma mass emerge. You can. Funny story, I actually cooked cicadas once. I didn't eat them, but I, I did fry some cicadas in butter and put them in cheesesteaks for, um, for the news, for the, for a news crew one time. There is video of them saying, no, I will never eat that. <laughs> like, darn it, I wanted to see if somebody was going to try it. Hmm. All right, so I'm just getting, going through and getting these base wing shapes. So the first one, about double the length. The second one, coming back around. Um, when we're sketching cicada wing venations, if you really want to get 
a good looking cicada. One thing to notice is that the wings veins never really reach the edge of the wing. So if you look here, this line right here is the edge of the wing and all of the wing venations kind of come back in this scalloped form and they never really touch the edge. Um, and that is, that is the pattern for all the way up the specimen. So if we look all the way at the tips of the wings, we can see that all of these, all of these cells close, but none of them actually reach the edge. Good. I'm glad you like that, Amy. Oh, the aroma of fried cicadas was amazing. It tasted like, or I mean, it smelled like butter. Alrighty. Let's see. Get that all set up. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and start sketching some of these veins. Um, the costa is this first one, the nice thick one at the top. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then these all come out to these scalloped edges. So let's see. My cicada's wing is going into the names, but that'll be fine once it's once I get some of this stuff taken care of. So these wing veins, they break off into what looks like they split three times and then come to a scallop. But I think when you're doing the, sorry, it went into the words, but I think when you're doing them, what's most important is that you, um, is that those wings don't touch the edge. Um, it's not unusual for cicadas. All, all cicadas, I think, have this wing venation type, um, but many bees and wasps, when they have membranous veins, they're going to go all the way to the edge. Most of the time, they go all the way to the edge in other insects. But cicadas are just a little bit different, and, that, and this is kind of just how they do, I guess. Coming out to these scalloped points. Awesome. Oh, I'm sorry, Marley. I should talk faster. What you can do is that you can pretend the edge that you drew is the edge of the veins and then give yourself an extra little sliver around the edge. <laughs> sorry, Marley. Alrighty. Um, so what I can do is give us a cicada under the microscope that will show us the, what it looks like when the wings are closed over the body. So when our wings are closed over the body, the front of the wing the front of the wing is on the edge and then, cause it kind of folds down and then the bottom of the wing is up here. And it comes all the way up to the center of the body. 
and generally they meet in the center and run down. Um, this specimen has, oh, you could see my finger for a minute. Um, this specimen is just a little bit off center, but generally when they're alive and happy, they hold their wings um, central over their body. And then I can go back and we can look at the lower, the hind wing, if some of us still need to look at that. Um, so you can actually just follow this angle that we sketched earlier and then come all the way to about center and then down. And then that wing is actually going to go past the length of the abdomen um, by a good length. Um, the wings are probably about double the length of the body. So, um, in this direction, I get nowhere near close enough to sketch the whole friend. Um, but you've got the same thing coming along the edge, the bottom edging here, if you wanted to go about and, and kind of give us the veins. I'm not going to go ahead and do that one more time, just for lack of time or focus. That works. Alrighty. So we've got our cicada. I'm going to go ahead. I mentioned I was going to and give her the little itty bitty segments for her antenna and then hairs because she had them at one point in her life <laughs> so that she gets antenna. All right. So let's check out. Her hind wing. Hey, microscope. There we go. Good morning. All right, so this is the hind wing right here. Um, so the front edge of the hind wing is right about here, and then it comes around, and then these are your anal veins and your anal loop, and then the scallops. Uh, there's a couple of things that we didn't get to see when we were drawing dorsally um, that are kind of interesting for this specimen in particular. Um, the first one is that if we look at the end of the abdomen, I believe that we can see his hook. I don't know what the... Oh, hey, come back here. There we go. So this is a, a lateral view of the abdomen. And if we look... Um, a lot of times in, well, in cicadas, the females are going to have something called an ovipositor. And so that looks a little bit like a spear that comes out of one of their last abdominal, uh, abdominal segments over here. So it kind of comes out and it looks like a spear and she uses it to pierce into the, um, to pierce into bark and to lay her eggs. All right. Um, but this is not a female. This is a male. Um, and so one of his reproductive organs a lot of times is closed in to his abdomen. But this specimen um, has them all kind of sticking out. So it's fair game. We can look. 
He's got this crazy hook. Yeah, so that's one kind of really cool feature of this cicada. Um, another one is going to be the, uh, the timbal or where he has the ability to make the sound from. Now, that's going to be on his underside. So we actually have to flip him over and look at his ventrals. We'll zoom out so that you can see the whole picture. All right. So... You cannot see the timbals from this angle because what you can see are these large triangles right here. And these large triangles, they're called operculum. I'll go ahead and type that in the section so that you guys know how to spell it. Um, they're called operculum. And they essentially, they make a sound... Um, a sound chamber that helps when the timpum, to the timpums, the timbals, the timbals that are underneath them are going to be making the sound. So, um, if we were looking, this is, this is up here is the middle legs. Um, this, these are the hind legs right here. So the, uh, the timbals are actually on the abdomen and then the operculums cover them up. Um, we'll look at them straight on because you can see they're actually separated from the body to create a little, essentially a resonance chamber um, to help make cicadas even louder, right? I'm just, these are the coxie of the hind legs. I was giving myself a place, a starting point, and then... So it's this triangle piece and this triangle piece. And these are the operculum, operculum. And they aren't all the way connected to the body. They're open. So if I flip him this way, he's getting flipped all of the ways. Let's see. Okay. Hopefully I'm not frozen. <sighs> I'm frozen. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to turn in circles. It's okay. We'll get there. All right. <laughs> might almost show you the chamber. This is the chamber I'm trying to show you guys that is like the resonance chamber. Sometimes it's just easier to look in the microscope. able to see it, but I can kind of show you an example with my hands to give you an idea. Marley, yes, I can teach you how to turn my camera in circles. <laughs> We can do all types of fun stuff um, on the live stream. I, I actually have a build a bug that I've never shown you guys. Maybe we, I'll show you. I'll show off my build a bug at some point. All right.
right. So that's our cicada. Um, I don't know if you have ever uh, taken like a piece of plastic or a um, like a harder piece of paper and drawn like a circle with the X or a square with an X in the center so that you've got it etched a little bit and you can pop it back and forth. Um, I used to do that a lot as a kid. I would take um, like the hard plastic on the outside of a binder or something and I would draw an X in it and a circle around it. And you can create like a little popper for yourself. And that's actually close to how cicadas are going to be making their sound. They have this thing called a timbal and it's like a drum essentially and it pops back and forth like this. And that pop or that click is what they can do it very, 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 very fast. Um, and that's what makes their chirping sound, um, along with the fact that those timbals are underneath the operculum. So they're actually down here making all the noise, and the operculum holds the noise in and creates a resonance before it comes out of, um, out of this space. And so that is one of the reasons why cicadas are just so long, so loud. <laughs> Oh, cool, you found a grass spider sling. That's fun. Build-a-bug, what? All right, all right, I'll share the build-a-bug. Um, we can do that, that's fine. So this is my build-a-bug. Today with some kids, I built a fly. Let me deactivate that really quick. All right, um, so we built a fly, and I haven't reset it yet, so I'll go ahead and take some of my parts away. Um, we have a head of thorax and an abdomen, just like, you know, insects have. Um, and we talk about what goes on the abdomen, what goes on the different parts. Um, and let's see, I have a bunch of different antenna types. So this is an aerostate antenna or the antenna of a fly. We have elbowed antenna, um, like of an ant. We have knobbed antenna from a butterfly, plumos. That's for our uh, moths. And then we have some basic kind of straight antenna. And then from all those antenna, we can choose one to add to our bug. And so, I don't know, first person to comment wins. Which antenna? Aristate, or uh, fly, ant, moth, butterfly, straight. Yeah, so this is this is my build a bug. I'm gonna give him some feathery antenna, and then there's all different types of like mouth parts. So I can give him like a chewing mouth part, and he can chew and swallow his food, or I could give him, I could be making a moth, and I could give him the, uh, let's see, a proboscis. And if we were making a butterfly, I could give her butterfly wings. I have monarchs already made. Something like that. <laughs> and our butterfly can have walking legs, but I also have jumping legs and digging legs and swimming legs and raptorial front. Let's make it a raptorial front leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes so and then I can add a, a stinger if I want because our butterfly can have a stinger <laughs> yeah this is what I do with kids we love it and we build bugs together and we talk about the different body parts and stuff um, so this is you know one of the things that I do I built this <laughs> <laughs> oh. I need to be on Sesame Street. Well, someone, I need to figure out how to do that. Yeah, we could even name it too. So we could name this Mothra, right? Because it has those grabby front legs and it, um, <laughs> and it, it has moth antenna. Oh man. We could, we could really change it up. Let's see. We could give it. We could make it a giant ladybug. Let's see.
I need to get my pointer out of the way. It's in the way. Yeah. No problem. Ah, uh, yeah, so that's my, that's my build bug <laughs> Africanized Kilepidoptera. I love it. That makes me happy. Oh, you know what? I didn't watch the new Mothra. I didn't know that it, um, it had a stinger. <laughs> bug Muppets. Man, Amy, I think you're onto something. I think we need some Bug Muppets. I'm not really good at throwing my voice or anything, but... I can have two cameras and one just have my fro face frozen or something funny. <laughs> Alright, so, um, we have those cicada, we got the cicada taken care of. Um, we got to talk about its body parts. We did look at it head on, although I didn't have a chance to really sketch it head on. Um, maybe you guys did when we were looking at it. Uh, we could flip it over and look at the bottom of its head because the bottom of its head has its long piercing and sucking mouth part. So if we wanted to check that out, we can. Um, it starts, so this is kind of the base, the pump part of the mouth part. And then um, coming out from there, the legs are kind of in the way, which is why I hadn't done this. Maybe if I darken it a little bit, maybe the contrast will help. So the mouth does come right about through in through here. So you can almost see the straw, but you definitely can see the end of it right here. Right there. So this is where that mouth part ends. So it looks almost like a straw and it goes all the way along here. All right. Do we have any other um, questions, final questions about cicadas? Um, would we like to um, look at the cicada killer that I found on the same tree? Um, are we feeling, how are we feeling? Oh, Sewing Nancy, you even sent me a picture of that. That was really cute. Uh, Marley Pfeiffer says it is time for beverages. I could not agree more. <laughs> uh. Alright, I'm going to get the labels back on my specimen because that's one of the things that I have to do. I've got to take these locality and identification labels off when I flip my specimens upside down. Um, and then I really, really need to remember to put them back on. I have one or two labels over here that have been disconnected from their specimens. I'm waiting for them to come back around. That's no good. Cicada killer! Deborah's in! All right. Very good. Let's get the cicada killer. Sweet. <laughs> my cicada killer has two compound eyes and three ocelli, just like my cicada had. Oh, man. Ryan, how, Ryoma, um, Ryoma, how frequently do you get cicadas? When I was in Michigan, we got cicadas every year because you've got alternating, um, biannual cicadas. Hmm. The question is, do I leave that? I think I leave that and then I go this way. Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to get started on this cicada, the cicada killer. Um, so our cicada killer is a wasp. She's in the... Wait a minute, minute. Are they still Cribronids, or has that changed? I feel like Cribronidy doesn't exist anymore. Eric, are you still around? Does Cribronity exist? I think that they are specids. Maybe not. I'm going to have to get back to you on their family. They used to be Crabronidae. I've got him labeled as a Crabronid. But there's been some recent taxonomic changes in the families. Mmm, darn it. I've not been to California, so I, um, I haven't really looked up distributions of insects. Okay, very good. We're still Cribronid for now. Thank you, Eric. Alright, going ahead and going and sketching our, our head. Um, making sure that I don't make him his head too big so that he fits on my paper. There we go. That's good. Alright, so that's going to be kind of the shape that we start with. It's this um, kind of wide oval with the notch at the end. That's going to be for the shaping around the front of the face and for where the antenna are connecting out. Um, this guy has actually kind of has very square eyes. He almost has a very square head. And I think that they're given that name. Ah, yes, the general shape of the whole cicada. I can give that to you. So, our general shape is going to be this head. Our thorax is generally a square. Very similar to that. And then we do have a wasp waist, so I pull this, like, a basic triangle in. And then... So, that's going to be kind of the basic shape of our... of our cicada killer. I guess I need a fourth camera so that I can show the specimen and my drawing in the microscope all at the same time. I just get to share camera space. Alrighty, let's see. We get the connections for our antenna. And our antenna, we've got the uh, the pedestal, right? That's the first segment. We've got the first segment that's a little longer. And then we've got a variety of segments at the end, and they're all very small. Kind of like that. All right, and then I have these three ocelli. I absolutely love the colors on these. I'm definitely going to be um, coloring these sketches in. That's good to know, Amy. I will make sure overall that we get basic shapes before we zoom in. That'll probably help a lot of people. Um, the other thing that I forgot to give you guys was a scale, because I know that a lot of us ask for scales, and I forgot to do that this time. So, to give you a little bit of a scale, um, the length of the specimen from the front of the head to the end of the abdomen is about three centimeters, or 
about an inch and an eighth. Something like that. And then the wingspan from left to right in centimeters. And keep in mind, you can see how I'm doing this. So I'm eyeballing it a little bit. Um, trying to make sure the specimen stays untouched. It's about six centimeters across for its wingspan or about about two and a half inches. As nature journalers in general, do you prefer centimeters or inches? Because generally, when you're working in science, people prefer centimeters. But I feel like there's also, um, we're in the United States, so I bet you we there's a number of us that use inches too. Correct? What do you guys feel? How do you guys feel about that? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move our microscope image down just a little bit. So going in and adding these kind of these these sutures or these scales along inside of the segment, um, we have here we go. Um, there's also these kind of shoulder caps, and these are where the uh, these are where the wings connect. So we kind of like to give those round at the top and um, straight on the edge, and then that's actually where your wings are going to connect to. Um, I made them closed, but if you want to make them open, you just make them in the other direction. So let's see. Um, if you want to make its wings open, then you want the straight line to be out a little bit more because that's kind of where you're going to follow. Um, whereas this wing, the, it's kind of facing this way, so my wing on this side is going to go in this direction. Do you see that? Okay. So I'm giving myself this center line between the meso and the meta, and then coming through and kind of fi finalizing these lines. A lot of these lines, because I gave you the outline, there's not there wasn't much to change on this segment right here. Um, and then going back to the abdomen, let's see. Look at those cool designs. All right, she definitely has a wasp waist. <laughs> centimeters, centimeters, centimeters. Good, good, good. All righty. So, um, going ahead and working um, on the abdomen, this place where it's kind of still expanding, we can kind of imagine that coming up towards us. Um, and then right about here, this is where it evens off. And so the first segment is going to be kind of at what feels like a little lower. And then we have, if we were counting abdominal segments, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to scooch this up just a little bit so we can see the end. The end has more details in it. Oh, 
All right. So going ahead and one finished way up there. One finished finished here. So this is a two. Three, four, five, six. And then going back at every single one of these segments and coming down and going out, that's what we do for giving that the appearance that there are um, uh, that there are that those segments kind of go into each other. Um, and then we can go ahead and give some of these colors, these color patterns, keeping in mind that the color patterns always revolve around the center line. Gorgeous. Agreed. And I don't know if you've heard me say this before or ever, but look at those tibial spines. <laughs> oh, man. Look at that. That's fine. That's epic. Okay. I'm excited to draw these legs. All right. So trying to decide if I was going to sketch the left or the right side, but I think I'm going to show the right side because that's the side I'm going to be sketching. Although I don't like the tibial spur on this side as much as I liked it on the other side. I don't know what this one is doing. Like why it's so much wider? It almost looks like it's two individual pieces, which is interesting. Maybe it's too... I want it to brighten up, but it's not going to get brighter. All right, so, fuzz. Let's see. I really want this. We're just going to have to do the left side and imagine that it's on the right side because the left side is receiving better light. The legs are so crazy awesome. All right, we're just going to leave it about there. All right, let's get this hind leg sketched. Um, I'm actually going to be drawing on the right-hand side, even though we're going to show the left legs. Um, you guys can, are probably going to draw on both sides anyway. So um, we have a femur, a tibia, the antarsi, just like the rest of our insects have had. This is the femur up here. Where this breaks, that is a joint. And then from that to here, this is the tibia. Now, the tibia is kind of funny because a lot of times the tibia is kind of longer and thin, but this tibia is kind of wide and chubby. It's a little fat around the edges. And then it has this really awesome spine. This is what we call a tibial spur a lot of times because it's long and it's at the end and I love them. Um, then we've got all of these. These are going to be our tibial spines. So I would say this is the tibial spur and these are the spines. Um, and then after the tibia, we have the tarsi. And these are all the, it is two spurs. Look at that.
It is two spurs. <laughs> um, and then you have all of these tarsal segments. And all of these tarsal segments also have these kind of aggressive looking spines. At the end of her, at the end of the legs, you've got these two tarsal claws and these two pads. Um... don't remember what the name of the pads are. I, I, they're, I forget them all the time. Eric told me once before. I tried to remember. It's okay. Femur. And then our tibia. Keep in mind, I'm drawing on the right side, so the spurs are going to go off to, they always go towards the body. And I'm going to draw two of them there to remind us. Are its spikes so huge because it has to carry off quite a large bug? Um, I would say... I would say that the hairs are not as um, strengthened for, for carrying things as much as for digging. Because these wasps are not only going to have to carry their cicada, but they dig a burrow and then they, and then they put the cicada in the burrow. So um, these are a sand wasp. And a lot of times creatures that live in sand need a lot of longer hairs um, to kind of brush off the sand that gets stuck or to keep the, hair, the, the sand off in general. Um, Ryan asks, do all insects have tibia? Yes. Um, all insects that have legs, as far as I know, have tibia. The tibia on an insect is always the second large segment on the leg. So if we were going along the length of the leg, you've got the coxy um, that you can't see from the top. That's like the hip bone. And then you've got the femur and the tibia, and then the tarsi. And that's the same leg segments pretty much on any insect that has legs. Um, sometimes in immature insects, you get weird things happening. So if it's a baby insect and it has like smaller legs, um, sometimes they'll be missing segments or the segments will be reduced to almost nothing. Um, but Yes, generally, if an insect has legs, it has tibia. Yeah, those spurs are used for digging not really carrying. Cool. All right, so we've got that hind leg taken care of. I think we can move the specimen up. <laughs> and it looks like we'll be able to see both the middle and the, and the front legs in one shot. Although it's going to be a little difficult. Oh, hey. I got this, guys. Let's do it this way. We changed up the view a little bit so that you can see the legs. Adjust my camera. Here we go. Come back. Come back. Microscope. Thank you. All right.
right, because it's a little more difficult to see the legs from the top because the wings are all open. I'm just going to turn her on her side like this. It might be easier for you guys to understand, though, if it was this way. Oh, hey, isn't that the character for the family? The nodule on the end of the pronotum? I have to, I would have to Google it. All right, so this is going to give us a better view of the legs. You can see right about here, right at that base, that's the coxa. Um, femur, tibia, and then all of the little tarsal segments. And we can do that on all of the legs. So the... The middle leg comes out right about um, in this general area. And generally, the middle and the hind legs go in the backwards direction, and the for front leg goes forward. Alrighty, and then the front leg. And the front leg's connected way up here and it goes in the forwards direction. Maybe this middle leg could have come up a little bit. my ear. All right. All right. So we have the legs, we have the wings, we got that taken care of. I'm going to look up a cheat sheet really quick. Don't mind me. I have all of my cheat sheets back from college and it gives me all of the distinct the all of the characteristics I use to ID these guys. And I think that what we're looking at right here is a uh, is characteristic for the family, but I wanted to look it up before I confirmed that with you. That's okay. All right, so um, that is going to be our that's going to be our cicada killer. She does have a couple of cool characteristics. Okay, so that's a character of the sphesids. The pronotum being lobed and not touching the tegula. Okay. I, fig I figured out what I was thinking about. I was thinking about the identification for sphesids, which is that this little bump here doesn't touch the tegula, which is the shoulder blade, that there's space in between it. But that's the same for both sphesids and crabronids, so it's not really an identifying characteristic anymore because they separate it. All right. Um, if we wanted, we could look at the mouth. We could look at this cicada killer head on because I think that this is a view that's always really sweet. Really, really awesome to check out. I like to see the cool mouth parts and the antenna. Plus this 
this way we can see the labial palps, the mouth fingers, my favorite thing ever. Look at those. Get my pointer out of the way. Increase the contrast, see if we can get... There we go. She's beautiful. All right, so um, right here, you're looking at the upper, this little segment right here is the upper lip, that's the labrum. These right here that are dark and shiny and super sclerotized, those are the mandibles. Those are the chewing mouth parts that they're gonna use to chew on all of their foods and they're predatory, so those are sharp, sharp and strong. Um, then, what looks like a bunch of little segments here, those are part of the mouth, those are palps. Um, and depending on where they're connected, they can be either maxillary palps or lab labial palps, but they're all mouth fingers. <clears throat> That's a good question, Amy. Um, I am not sure the morphological characteristics between the male and the female cicada killers. I would point that direction towards Eric Eaton. He would probably have a, he would definitely have a better idea than I did on that one. That's what it was, Eric. Cool. I wish I had a male to show you guys so that we could compare the leg spurs. Um, I don't believe that I have a, a male cicada killer. I need to put it on the checklist. Need to find one. All right. How are we... Um, how are we doing? Do we have any um, questions, concerns, comments about our um, our cicada killer, our carbonid, or whether or not they, um, let's see, if you have any questions or if you, there's um, an angle you would like to see, if there's a body part that you'd like zoomed in on, you want to see something closer, I'm always available to do that. I was, um, when I went to bug camp at Michigan State, State um, Michigan State's campus is full of cicada killers. They're all over the place, and there's one kind of very large field that the soil is a little sandier at, um, that they will swarm, and they'll be, um, they can, there, there can be 50 cicada killers all in this one large spot, um, and, uh, the kids, you know, the kids at bug camp, they were always really afraid of the giant wasps over there, right? Uh, um, but you can, they're, they're generally not going to mess with you as long as you don't get into their territory too much. Um, unfortunately, because they were laying there, yeah, they would, um, they'd kind of come after you. Thank you, Eric. Oh, that makes me happy. I am, um, I'm, I'm working on it. I, uh, I'm working on it. <laughs> oh, I have a really awesome collection of moths spread that we haven't really gotten, gotten into, gotten to sketching because some of these are so huge that I'm not, oh, this is the wrong box. <laughs> this is another collection. A uh, side view of the head. I can do that.
there you go. Side view of the head. So this is a like a a small piece of my um of my butterflies and moth collection. And I would really like to start sketching some of these bigger silk moths or some of these really awesome sphinx moths. Um, but I'm not exactly sure how to show them off all large and awesome at the same time because the microscope just doesn't fit enough of their bodies um, to make it reasonable. I've been trying to stick to smaller insects so that they can kind of be focused on. Um, yeah, but I would really like to get into some of these, maybe the notenodon. This is a, um, this, this guy makes me happy. Um, this is a, this is a heapy alid, or a swift moth, um, collected in Michigan. And that moth in particular, I refused to put into my insect collection for my class, um, because my father collected for, it for me, first of all. But secondly, um, the, uh, the professor was jealous of it, and he held the right to take any insects out of our collections for the MSU Museum. And I was like, I really want to keep my collection whole, so I don't need this specimen in my collection. And I just, you know, kind of smuggled it back home and didn't show anybody. Ha 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 I'm excited to get out and collecting again this summer because there are, I've got a bunch of awesome things in my collection, but I'm realizing as I'm going through and people are asking to sketch things, I'm like, oh, that's a really common insect that I just don't have yet. Like, I have a variety of ladybugs, but I've always liked to collect the native ladybugs. So I don't even have, I don't have the multicolored Asian lady beetle, for instance, in my collection. And I laughed about that because I was talking to them to, about them to children, to kids. And I was like, and this ladybug, and I went to my collection and I was like, right, it's, it's invasive and non-native and I just haven't put it in my collection yet. So those are some little holes that I kind of have to fill in. Um, I am proud of my Chrysina. I have all four species of Chrysina that you can find in the United States. Um, Chrysina lacantii was my last one to collect, and I collected two of them this summer, um, last summer. So that was exciting. All right. I think that we are closing in on our time. I have had a wonderful time chatting with everybody and answering bug questions and sketching with you. I think that we have, everybody has all the angles that they want for our friends. We drew both a cicada. I drew him big and sideways. Um, we have both a cicada and a cicada killer. Yes. Um, and we got to talk a little bit about the, the sound boxes and the cicadas. Um, the other two insects that I had considered sketching with you guys today were um, a bee mimic robber fly, which I still think is awesome and will still be on the list, um, and an ambush bug. Um, actually, here, let me show you something really quick. I have to go and grab a picture from my computer, but I can add that really quick so that you guys can see this. So this is another insect, the head of an insect that I was considering sketching with you guys. It's called an ambush bug. And so it's actually in the subfamily Phymatony, um, in as an assassin bug. It's a Regiveid. So, um, 
So I think that that is definitely going to be on the list for um, guys to sketch. I love that. This is just a microscope image that I took of my specimen. Um, but I love that he's got the, his compound eye is the same color as his the as his head so this is his eye right here and it blends in perfectly and you can see that his like piercing and sucking mouth part is shorter and stouter and thicker and that's because he's predatory and so that can pierce into prey whereas our um whereas our cicada today had that long and thin um tube-like mouth part that pierced into trees and so that's a plant eater versus this guy who's predatory Ah, yes, ladies and gentlemen, Eric Eaton joins us, and he is an awesome, he is written some awesome books, including, I've got it, it's behind my magic wall, this book right here, Wasps by Eric Eaton, um, and he has a Twitter account, Bug Eric, and you should go and check him out, because he is awesome, and uh, he is also an awesome bug lover, and we appreciate um, meeting people who are like-minded. Yes, Fimata, <laughs> Eric, I'm so excited. We need to sketch him. Um, but that will be a sketch for another time. So, oh, I'm not centered. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, um, these are my links. You can find the links also in the doodly doo in the description box below. Um, so, I teach out school classes. These are for kids under the age of 18. So, all of us adults out here have to stick to YouTube Live. Um, but if you, there's a young one in your life who wants to build a bug with me, um, you can find those classes here. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Hang out with me on Instagram where we do hashtag guess that bug. Um, generally three times a week. Uh, I have to take all the microscope pictures, so sometimes I miss a day. And um, this helps me out a lot. If you feel like it, if you want to, it's super, super appreciated. <laughs> all right. Um... Sounds good. My website is theinsectopia.com if you are ever interested. Um, or, you know, if you ever want to come on a bug hike, I'm in the Philadelphia region. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Um, I, I will be here. I will be here next week, but two weeks from now, I am going to take a break. So March 24th, we are going to take a break. We're going to skip that week, but we will be back. I'm going to be in New Orleans seeing if I can find some cool bugs down there. <laughs> all right. I think that everybody is connected. Everybody saw the, everybody saw all of the places. Instagram kicked you out, Eric? What? Why would they do that? That's silly. Because Eric has awesome photography, too. He takes a lot of his own pictures. All right. Um, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to be signing off, but you can sit around and chat if you'd like. The chat box will continue to be open. And I might hang out on chat, too, if we're still around. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.